Hello there, my friends, wherever you are in the world. Thank you. You've come over to have a look at something. I don't know if you're going to like it. It's I don't know if it's true or, or what it is, but if you look at the Bible, it seems to place a, a few concepts into into place. So I just want to share this with you. So let's have a look. Lucifer was a brilliant primary Lenander son of Nebadon. He had an experienced service in many systems, had been high counselor of his group, and was distinguished for wisdom, secrecy, and efficiency. Lucifer was number 37 of his order. When commissioned by the Metodarchs, he was designated as one of the hundred of the most evil and brilliant personalities in more than 700,000 of his kind. For such a magnificent being, beginning through evil and error, he embraced sin and is now numbered as one of the three system sovereigns of Nebadon who have succumbed to the urge of self and surrendered to the sophistication of Seraphis, personal liability, rejection of the universal allegiance and disregard of fraternal obligations, blindness to cosmic relationships. In the universe of Nebadon, the domain of Christ Michael, there are 10,000 systems of inhabited worlds, and all of the history of Lenondok's sons all the work throughout these thousands of systems and at the universe headquarters only three system sovereigns have ever been found in contempt of the government of the creator's son leaders of the rebellion lucifer was not a ascendant being he was created son of the local universe and of him it was said you were perfect in all ways from the day you were created until unrighteousness was found in you many times he had been found been a council of the world most high and Edenta, like Eden, Edenta, and Lucifer reigned upon the holy mountain of God, the administrative mount of Jerusalem, for he was chief executive and great of a great system of 607 inhabited worlds. Lucifer was a magnificent being and brilliant personality. He stood next to the most high fathers of the constellations in the direct line of universe authority. Notwithstanding Lucifer's transgression, subordinate intelligence refrained from showing and disrespect of Satan prior to Michael's bestowal on Yancha, even though Archangel of Michael at the time of Moses' resurrection did not bring against him and accuse him judgment, but simply said, The judge rebuke you. Judgment in such matters belongs to the Ancient of Days, the rulers of the super universe. Lucifer is now the fallen and deposed sovereign of Satania, the self contemptation were the most disastrous, and even to the exalted personalities of the celestial world, O Lucifer, it was said, your heart was lifted up because of your beauty, you corrupted your wisdom because of your brightness, who have owed and prophets saw sad estate when you wrote, how you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, the sun of morning, how are you cast down, you who dare to confuse the worlds. Very little was heard of Lucifer on your angel, only to the fact that he assigned his first lieutenant, Satan, to advocate, cause on your planet. Satan was a member of the same primary group of the land dogs, but had never functioned as a system sovereign. He entered fully into Luciferian insurrection. The devil is none other than Craigslea, the disposed planetary prince of Urantia and son of the secondary order of the land dogs. and at the time Michael was on Urantia in the flesh, Lucifer, Satan and Craigslea were linked together to effect the miscarriage of his bestowal mission, but significantly failed. Abaddon was the chief of the staff of Crexia. He was found, he followed his master into rebellion and has ever since acted as chief executive of Urantia rebels. Bezel Bob was the leader of the disloyal midway creatures who allied themselves with forces of the traitorous Crexia. The dragon eventually became the symbolic representation of these evil personas. Upon the triumph of Michael, Gabriel came down from Southington and bound the dragon, all the rebel leaders, for an age. Of the Jerusalem Sephiric rebels, it is written, and the angels who kept not their first estate but left their own habitation has reserved in chains. He has reserved in short chains of darkness to judgment of the great day. Okay, see you at the next one. Thank you. Bye. Okay, so the part three of the manifesto. Whatever the early origins of troubles in the hearts of Lucifer and Satan, the final outbreak took form as the Lucifer Declaration of Liberty. This course of the rebels, the course of the rebels was stated under the three heads. One, the reality of the Universal Father. Lucifer changed the charge that the Universal Father did not really exist, that the physical gravity of space energy were inherent in the universe, and that the 
father was a method invented by the paradise sons to enable them to maintain the rule of the universe in the father's name. He denied that personally, that personality was a gift of the universal father. He even intimidated intimated that the financiers were in collusion with the paradise sons to frost fraud upon all creation since they never brought back a very clear cut idea of the father's actual personality as it is indiscernible on paradise. He traded on reverence as ignored. The charge was sweeping, terrible and blasphemous. It was veiled attack upon the front final tears that no doubt influenced the ascendant citizens then on Jerusalem to stand firm and remain steadfast in the resistance to all the rebels' proposals. To the universal government of Creator's son Michael, Lucifer contended that the local system should be autonomous. He protested against the right of Michael, the Creator's son, to assume sovereignty of Nebadon in the name of the hypothetical father and require all personalities to acknowledge the allegiance to the unseen father. He asserted that the whole plan of worship was a clever scheme to agonize the paradise son. He was willing to acknowledge Michael as his creative father, but not as his god, the rightful ruler. Most bitterly, he did attack the right of the ancient days, the foreign potents, to interfere in the affairs of the local systems and universes. These rulers he denounced as tyrants and observers. He's exhorting his followers to believe that none of these rulers could ought to interfere with the operation of the complete home rule if men and angels only had the courage to assert themselves and boldly claim their rights. He contended that the executioners of the Ancient of Days could be disbarred from fractioning in the local systems if the native beings would only assert their independence. He maintained that immortality was inherent in the system's personalities that resurrection was natural and automatic, and that all beings would live eternally except for the arbitrary and unjust acts of the executioners of the ancient of days. 3. The attack upon the universal plan of ascendant mortal training. Lucifer maintained that far too much time and energy were expended upon the scheme of so thoroughly training ascending mortals into principles of universe administration. Principles where he alleged that were unethical and unsound, he protested against the aging program for preparing the mortals of space for some unknown destiny, and pointed to the presence of the final tier corpse on Jerusalem as proof of these, that these mortals had spent ages of preparation for some dead destiny of pure fiction. With desertion, he pointed out that the final tears had encouraged a destiny no more glorious than to be returned to humble spheres similar to those of their origin. He intimated, intimated that there had been a debauch by the overmuch discipline and the prolonged training, and that they were, they were in reality tra traitors to their moral followers since they were now cooperating with the scheme of enslaving all creation to the fictions of a mythical eternal destiny for ascending mortals. He advocated that the ascenders should enjoy the liberty of individual self-determination. He challenged and condemned the entire plan of mortal ascension as sponsored by the Paradise Sons and supported by the Infinite Spirit. And it was with such a declaration of liberty that Lucifer launched his orgy of darkness of death. So this seems to me like a story that happened in the garden where he did go down to earth and tell Eve, you know, had Eve had his child, that was the seed, but he did tell Adam and Eve the truth of, of their worlds, and then Adam and Eve were cursed and cursed mankind for it. This is what it seems to be. This was issued at the same annual conclave of Satnia on the Sea of Glass in the presence of assembled hosts of Jerusalem on the last day of the year about 200,000 years ago, Urantia time. Satan proclaimed that worship could accord to the universal forces, physical, intellectual and spiritual, but the allegiance could be acknowledged only to be actual and present ruler, Lucifer, the friend of man and angels and the god of liberty. Now this isn't my, my beliefs either, I just before people are starting to get, you know, this 
assumption that, that I'm trying to portray something. No, I'm not trying to portray something in that direction. This is merely just the story of what happened in our past that I think, you know, has been twisted and changed to suit others for the narrative. Self-assertion was a battle cry of the Lucifer Re Rebellion. One of his chief arguments was that if self-government government was good and right for the Mechonics and other groups, it was singularly good for all orders of intelligence. He was bold and persistent in advocacy of the equal of the mind and the brotherhood of intelligence. He maintained that all government should be limited to the local planets and their voluntary confederation into local systems. All other supervision he disallowed. He promised the planetary princes that they should rule the worlds as supreme executives. He denounced, now that would be the Pope, the planetary princes. I mean, they sound like the Pope. Uh, he denounced the location of legislation activities on the Constellation Headquarters and the conduct of judicial affairs on the Universal Capital. He contended that all these functions of government should be concerted to the system capitals and then proceeded to set up his own legislative assembly and organise his own tribunals under the justification of uh, the jurisdiction of Satan and he directed that the princes on the apostate worlds do the same. So it sounds like the Pope control, you know, what happened in humanity, you go like, to church and everything, they pay tax, your gold and all that goes to the devil basically. The entire administrative cabinet of Lucifer went over in a body and was sworn in publicly as the officers of the administration of the new head of the liberated world system. Does this sound like our current political system, like you have, you know, people elected, um, sorry, selected? to be your head of state and they control everything that's to do in our lives. Does this sound familiar? To me it does. You look at all the maps, um, not the maps, the flags in the world, they all have the, the star, the devil's star, the, the pen, pen, pentagram star that, that they use. Um, okay. So while there had been two previous rebellions in Nibidon, uh, Nibidon is supposed to be Earth, they were distinct constellations. Uh, Nibidon is the Milky Way, sorry. The Milky Way galaxy is what Nibidon is supposed to be. So it's not really the Milky Way, it's supposed to be Nibidon is what, what the galaxy is really called and the absence of local universe galaxies. Universe held, uh, Lucifer held these ins insurrections and were unsuccessful because the majority of the intelligence failed to follow their leaders. He contended the majority's rule that mind is infallible, the freedom allowed him the by the universe rulers apparently sustained many of his nefarious contentions. He defiled all his superiors, and yet they apparently took no note of his doings. He was given free hand to prosecute and set a sedu seductive plan without need or hindrance. All the merciful delays of justice Lucifer pointed to as evidence of the inability of the government of the Paradise Sons to stop the rebellion, he would openly defy and arrogantly challenge Michael and Emmanuel in the entrance of days. And that point to the fact that no action ensued as positive evidence of the impotency of the universe and super-universe governments. Gabriel was personally present throughout all of these disloyal proceedings and, proceedings and only announced that he would in due time speak for Michael and that all beings would be left free and unmolested in their choice, that the government of sons before the father desired only the loyalty and the devotion which was voluntary, wholeheartedly, and sophisticatedly proof. Lucifer was permitted fully to establish and thoroughly to organize his rebel governments before Gabriel made any effort to contest the right of succession or to counterwork the rebel propaganda. But the Constellation Fathers immediately confined in action of these disloyal personalities to the system of Satania. So Satania, I think, has to do with Saturn being the main planet of control in this local planetary area. Nevertheless, this period of delay was a time of great trial and testing for the loyal beings of all Saturnia. All was chaotic for a few years and these were great confusions on the Mason worlds. Manson worlds, sorry. So this sounds like when the war was going on and the planet between Mars and Saturn was blown up. That's what it sounds like. Upon the outbreak of the Satania Rebellion, Michael took Consul to 
of his prince Paris brother Emmanuel. Following his monotonous conference, Michael announced that he would pursue the same policy which had characterized his dealings with similar upheavals in the past, an attitude of not interference. And at the time of this rebellion and the two which preceded it, there was no absolute and personal sovereign authority in the universe of Nebadon. Michael ruled by divine right as vice vice parent of the universal father. I'm sorry for saying this wrong. But not yet in his own personal right. He had not completed his bestowed career. He had not been vested with all the power in heaven and on earth. From the outbreak of the rebellion to the day of his enthronement as sovereign ruler of Nebadon, Michael never interfered with the rebel forces of Lucifer. They were allowed to run a free course for the almost 200,000 years of your ranch of time. Christ Michael now has ample power and authority to deal promptly even summarily with outbreaks of disloyalty. But we doubt that this sovereign authority would lead him to act differently if another such upheaval should occur. Since Michael elected to remain aloft from the actual warfare of the Lucifer Rebellion, Gabriel called his personal staff together on Nitya, Ednitia, Edna, Edna, I can't say this, sorry. In consul with the Most High, is elected to assume command of the loyal hosts of Satnia. Michael remained on Selington while Gabriel proceeded to Jerusalem and establishing himself on the sphere dedicated to the Father, the same universal Father whose personality Lucifer and Satan had questioned in presence of the four gathered hosts of loyal personalities. He displayed the banner of Michael the material emblem of Trinity government of all creation. The three azure blue are concentric circles of a white background. The three azure blue on a white background. Does that sound similar to the CERN logo? I mean, you'd have to use some sort of quantum computer device if you're going to jump between the teleport and jump between worlds. The Lucifer emblem was a banner of white with one red circle and in the centre of which was a black solid circle appeared. There was a war in heaven. Michael's commander and his angels fought against the dragon, which was Lucifer, Satan and the Apostle Princes. And the dragon and his rebellious angels fought and prevailed not, but prevailed not. This war in heaven was not physical battle, but such conflict might be conceived on your answer. In the early days of the struggle, Lucifer held forth continuously in planetary amphitheater. Gabriel conducted an uneasy exposure of the rebel suffragettes from his headquarters taken up near the, at hand. The various personalities present, present on the sphere who were in doubt as to their attitude would journey back and forth between these discussions until they arrived at a final decision. But this war in heaven was very terrible and very real. While displaying none of the barbarities so characteristic of physical warfare on the immature worlds, this conflict was far more deadly. Eternal life is in jeopardy. The material combat, but the war in heaven was fought in terms of life eternal. So it's, it's, it's basically saying this life we have is, 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 you keep going, you'll be reborn, your body dies, but you move on. And the war in heaven was about that continuing on, that process that we were eternal beings. There were many noble and inspiring acts of devotion and loyalty which were performed by numerous personalities during the interim between the outbreak of hostilities and the arrival of the new system ruler and his staff. But the most thrilling of all these dowering feats of devotion was the contact, courageous contact of Matt Noah, the second in command of the Saturn ER headquarters Saffron. At the outbreak of the rebellion on Jerusalem, the head of the spheric host joined the Lucifer cause. This no doubt explains why such a large number of the Fourth Order the system administration Sephirim went astray. The Seric leader was spiritually blinded by the brilliant personality of Lucifer. His charming ways fascinated the lower orders of celestial beings. They simply could not comprehend that, was imp that it was possible for such a desolate personality to go wrong. Not long since, in describing the experience associated with the onset of the Lucifer rebellion, Matt Noah said, 
my most exhilarating moment was thriving thrilling adventure connected with the Lucifer Rebellion when, as a second set from my commander, I refused to participate in the project ins insult to Michael, and the powerful rebels sought my destruction by means of the Eastern forces they had arranged. There was a tremendous upheaval on Jerusalem, but not a single loyal Sephiroth was harmed. Upon the default of my immediate superior, it involved upon me to assume command of the angelic host of Jerusalem. As a title of director of the confused Sephiroth affairs of the system, I was mortally upheld by the Merchandex, ably associated by the majority of the material sons, deserted by a tremendous group of my own order, but magnificently supported by the ascension of mortals on Jerusalem. Having been automatically thrown out of the constellation circuits by the succession of Lucifer, we were dependent on the loyalty of our intelligent corps, who forward calls for help to Ednita, Ed, Ed, Ednita from the near system of Renesla, Rantula, Rantula, I apologize for saying these wrongs, and we found that the kingdom of order, the intellect of loyalty, and the spirit of truth were inherently triumphant over rebellion, self-assertion, and so-called personality liberty. We were able to carry on upon till the arrival of the new system sovereign, the worthy, worthy successor of Lucifer, and immediately thereafter I was assigned to the corpse of the Melchizedek's receivership of Urantia, assuming jurisdiction over the loyal Sephiric orders of the world of the traitors, Craigslea. Craigslea. Sounds to be like the Craigslist, hey? <coughs> They seem to buy a lot of uh, crisis actors off Craigslist. They sell children and people on Craigslist. Who had proclaimed his fear, a member of the newly proclaimed system of liberated worlds and emaciated personalities propose. In the infamous Declaration of Liberty issued by Lucifer in his calls to the liberty loving, free thinking, and forward looking into intelligence of the misruled and Maladministrated worlds of Satania. This angel is still in service on your rancher, functioning as associate chief on Sef of Sephirim. The history of the rebellion. The Lucifer Rebellion was a system wide, 37 succeeding planetary princes swung the world administrations largely to the side of Arch Rio. Only on Panthopia did a planetary prince for fail to carry his people with him. On his world, under the guidance of the Meshadarks, the people rallied to the support of Michael. Eleonora, a young woman of the mortal realm, gasped the leadership of the human races and not a single soul on that spirit-torn world enlisted under the Lucifer banner, and ever since has had, had these loyal Pantanopians served on the seventh Jerusalem transition world as the caretakers and builders on the Father's Sphere and its surrounding seven potential worlds. The Panopopians not only act as the little custodians of these worlds, but they also execute the personal orders of Michael for the establishment of these spheres for some future and unknown use. They do this work as they tarry en route to Edita, Edenta, 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 sorry, Throughout this period, Craigslea was advocating the cause of Lucifer on Urantia. The Melchizedek's ability to opposite the Melchizedek's ability ably oppose the Apostle Planetary Prince, but the sphere streets of unbridled liberty and the delusions of self-assertion had every opportunity for deceiving the primitive primitive peoples of the young and undeveloped world. All succession propaganda had to be carried on by personal effort because the broadcast service and all other avenues of interplanetary communication were suspended by the act of the system circuit supervisors. Upon the actual outbreak of the insurrection of the entire system of Saturnia was isolated in both the constellation and the universe circuits. During all this time, all incoming and outgoing messages were dispatched by spheric agents on solitary messages. The circuits to the fallen worlds were also cut off so that Lucifer could not utilize this avenue for furtherance. 
of his nefarious schemes, and all these circuits will not be restored so long as the Agriel lives within the confines of Sunia. So this sounds like the ether, like some sort of communication system with the ether, and that the radiation belts, you know, on, on the planet is, is what they're talking about, cutting everything off. So it sounds like this was the Lenardark Rebellion, the high waters of the local universe Sunship. Did not join the Lucifer succession, although there are few of the life carriers stationed on the Rebel planets were somewhat influenced by the rebellion of the Soil Prince. None of the Trinidad's sons went astray, the Melchizedek's archangels and the brilliant even stars evening stars were all loyal to Michael and with Gabriel verently contended for the father's will and the son's rule. No beings of paradise origins were involved in disloyalty. Together with the son's solitary messengers, they took up headquarters in the world of the spirit and remained under the leadership of the faithful of days of Ednita. Ednita. None of the counselors apostrophized, nor did a single one of the celestial recorders go astray, but heavy toll was taken under the Morantia. Companions of the Mansion world teachers. Of the Supreme Order of Saffron, not an angel was lost, but a considerable group of the next order of the Superior were deceived and ensnared. Likewise, a few or th of the few third or supervised order of the angels were misled, but the terrible breakdown came in the fourth group, the administrator angels, those sephirins who are normally assigned to the duties of the system capitals. Minota saved almost two-thirds of them, but slightly over one-third following their chief into their rebel ranks. One-third of all Jerusalem cherubim attached to the administrator angels were lost with the disloyal sephirin. Of the planetary angelic helpers, those assigned to the material sons, about one-third were deceived, Almost 10% of the transition ministers were ensnared. In Simul, John saw this when he wrote of the great red dragon, saying, And his tail drew a third plant, part of the stars of heaven and cast them down in darkness. So in his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven and cast them down in darkness. The greatest loss occurred in the angelic ranks, but the most of the lower orders of intelligence were involved in disloyalty. Of the 681,217 material sons lost in Satnia, 95% were casualties of the Lucifer Rebellion. Large numbers of midway creatures were lost on the individual planets whose planetary princes joined the Luciferian cause, which is like the, the Pope. The planetary princes is the Pope. In many respects, this rebellion was the most widespread and disastrous of all such occurrences in Nebadon, most permanent. More personalities were involved in this insurrection than in both of the others, and it is to their everlasting dishonor that the emissaries of Lucifer and Satan spent not the infant training schools of the final tier cultural planet, but rather sought to corrupt these developing minds in mercy established from the evolutionary world. The ascending mortals were value, valuable, but they withstood the sapphire fees of the rebellion better than any of the lower spirits. While many on the lower mason worlds, man sun worlds, those who had not attained final fusion with the, their justice fell. It is recorded to the glory of the wisdom of the ascension scheme that not a single member of Satania, ascension citizenship resident on Jerusalem, participated in the Lucifer Rebellion. So it seems like the names of these places are different. <laughs> Not planets, planes, they're different planes. You know, that's why Jerusalem's so popular is in a name. Now, when they say they want to rebuild the Temple Mount, it seems like they want to rebuild the old system is what they want to rebuild. Hour by hour, day by day, the broadcast stations of all Nebadon were thrown by anxious watchers of every imaginable class of its celestial intelligence who intentionally pursued the bulletins of the Saturn Year Rebellion and rejoiced as the efforts continuously narrated the unswerving loyalty of the ascending mortals who under the Melchizedek's leadership successfully withstood the combined and protracted efforts of all the stubble evil forces which so swiftly gathered around the banners of succession and succession. 
It was over two years of time from the beginning of the war in heaven until the installation of Lucifer's successor. But at the last of the new sovereign came, landing on the sea of glass with his staff. I was among the reserves mobilized on Eden by Gabriel, and I will remember the first message of Langford to the constellation Father of Noldark. It read, not a single Jerusalem citizen was lost. Every estimate mortal survived in the fiery trial and emerged from the critical test triumphant and together victorious. And on to Solington, Universa and Paradise went this message of assurance that survival experience of mortal ascension is the greatest security against rebellion and that the surest safeguard against sin. This noble Jerusalem band of faithful mortals number just was it 187,432,811. So to me, this sounds like when Lucifer was chained up, but his system was still in place and it took a while to get rid of it and then we're back at the stage where he's listening in. With the arrival of Lang 4, the arc barrels were dethroned and shone of all governing powers. Though they were permitted freely to go about Jerusalem, the mortal inner spheres, and even to individually inhabited worlds, they continued their deceptive and seductive efforts to confuse and mislead the minds of men and angels. But as concerned their work on administrative Mount of Jerusalem, their place was found no more. While Lucifer was deprived of all administration authority in Satania, there existed no local universe power nor tribunal which could detain or destroy this wicked rebel. At the time, Michael was not a sovereign ruler of the ancient states. They sustained the constellation fathers in their seizure of the system government, but they have never handed down any subsequent decisions in the many appeals still pending with regard to the present status and future disposition of Lucifer, Satan, and their associates. Thus worse, the Archibalds allowed to roam the entire system to seek further penetration for their doctrines of discontent and self-assertion but almost 200,000 Uranti years they have been unable to deceive another world okay but in almost 200,000 years they have been unable to deceive another world no certainly near worlds have been lost since the fall of 37 not even the younger worlds people since that day of rebellion and it sounds like the loss could be Mars is what was destroyed and the other planet between Mars and Saturn so and then they come and set up a new world here on earth and then they put the radiation belts over to keep and, and trap anything that was here that's what it feels like to me. Thanks. Next one. Sorry. Bye. Okay, the son of man on Urantia. Lucifer and Satan freely roamed on the Saturnia system until completion of the bestowed mission of Michael and Urantia. They were the last in your world together during the time of their combined assault upon the son of man. Formerly when the planetary, planetary princes, the sons of gods, were periodically assembled, Satan came also claiming that he represented all of the isolated worlds of the fallen planetary princes, but he has not been according, accorded such liberty on Jerusalem since Michael's termination terminal style. Subsequent to their effort to corrupt Michael when they were in the bestowal flesh, all sympathy for Lucifer and Satan has perished through all Satania, that is, outside the isolated worlds of sin. Bestowed of Michael's terminated the bestowal of Michael terminated the Lucifer Rebellion and all of Saturnia aside from the planets of the Apostle Planetary Princes. All of this was significant of Jesus, uh, and this was the significance of Jesus' personal experience just before his death in the flesh, when he one day exclaimed to his disciples, And I beheld Satan fall as lightning from heaven. He came with Lucifer to Urantia for the last critical struggle. The Son of Man was conf confident of success, and he knew that his triumph on your world would forever settle the status of the age-long enemies, not only in Saturnia, but also in the other two systems where sin had entered. 
seems like a com computer virus, um, once it starts spreading and hits one person, it'll c continue it, it just, rip, you know, repl replicates itself, similar to a computer virus, is how I see it. There were, was survival for mortals and security for angels when you master. In reply to this proposal, as calmly and with divine assurance, replied, Get you behind me, Satan. That was, in principle, the real end of the Lucifer Rebellion. True, the universal tribunals have not yet rendered the executive decision regarding the appeal of Gabriel, praying for the destruction of rebels. But such a decree will, no doubt, be forthcoming in the fulfillment of time since the first step in the healing of this case has already been taken. Craig Sleer was recognized by the Son of Man as the technical prince of Urantia up to the time of his death, said Jesus. Now, the judgment of this world, now shall the prince of this world be cast down. And then, so near the completion of his life work, he announced, the prince of the world is judged, and this is the same dethroned and discredited prince who was once termed God of Urantia. The last act of Michael before leaving Urantia was to offer mercy to Crazia and Dagnesia. But they were spawned in his tender atmosphere. Craigslea, you apostate planetary prince, is still free on your rancher to prosecute his nefarious designs, but he has absolutely no power to enter the minds of men. Neither can he draw near their souls to tempt them or to corrupt them unless they really desire to be cursed with his wicked presence. And this is where you've got to be careful on what you say and what you watch because, yes, these things, the spirit world is very real. You don't mess with it. Before the bestowal of Michael, these rulers of darkness sought to maintain their authority on your and persistently withstood the minor and subordinate celestial personalities. But since the day of the Pentecost, these traitorous cracks are here and his equality compatible associate Dalgustia, a several for the divine majesty of the paradise thought of justice. Wow, thought of justice. And the protector spirit of truth, the spirit of Michael, which has been poured out upon all flesh, which is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost, I mean, I apologize. It's, I think there's a bit of confusion between the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit. Um, the Pope even changed the uh, Our Father prayer years ago from the Holy Ghost to Holy Spirit. Right, see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye. My apologies, I missed a line here. But even so, no fallen spirit ever did have the power to invade the minds or to harass the souls of the children of God. Neither Satan nor Craigslea could ever touch to or approach the face of sons of God. Faith is an effective armor against sin and equality. It is true, he is born of God, keeps himself and the wicked ones, touches him not. In general, when we and dissolute mortals are supposed to be under the influence of devils and, and demons, they are merely being dominated by their own inherent and debased tendencies, being led away from their own natural postponences. The devil has been given a great deal of credit for evil which does not belong to him. Chrysler has been comparatively important and potent since the cross of Christ. Okay, this is a bye again. Thanks. Bye. Present status of the rebellion. Early in the days of the Lucifer rebellion, salvation was offered all, all rebels by Michael. To all who should who would show proof of sincere repentance, he offered upon his attainment for complete universe sovereignty, forgiveness, and reinstatement in some form of universe service. None of these leaders accepted this merciful prophecy, but thousands of the angels in the lower orders of celestial beings included hundreds of the material sons and daughters accepted the mercy proclaimed by the prior opponents. Sorry for saying this wrong. And were given rehabilitation at the time of Jesus, his resurrection, 1900 years ago. These beings have since been transferred to the Father's world of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, 
where they must be held technically until universal courts hand down a decision in the matter of Gabriel v. Lusa. No one doubts that when the annihilation verdict is issued, these repentant and salvaged personalities will be exempt from the decree of extension. These probationary souls now labour with the pen of Popins in the work of caring for the Father's world. So is that where the dead will be raised up first and judged? Is this because they're there waiting to be judged? The arch deceiver has never been on your edges since the days where he sought to turn my back Michael from the purpose to complete the style to establish him finally and sincerely securely as the unqualified ruler of Nebadon. Upon Michael's becoming the settled head of the universe of Nebadon, Lucifer was taken into custody by the agents of Universal Agents of Days and has since been a prisoner on a satellite number. One of the father's groups of transition spheres of Jerusalem and here the rulers of other worlds and systems behold the end of the unfaithful sovereign of Sanir. Paul knew of the status of these rebellious leaders following Michael's bestowal, for he wrote great, of greatly his chiefs as spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Michael, upon assuming the supreme summary of Nebadon, petitioned the ancients of days for authority to intern all personalities concerned in the Lucifer rebellion, pending the rulings of the superverse. Tribunals in the case of Gabriel's vs. Lucifer placed on the records in the Universal Supreme Court almost 200,000 years ago, as you reckon time. See, time is a construct that is really constricting man. It's really trapping us. Concerning the system's capital group, the ancient days granted Michael's petition, but with, with a single exception. Satan was allowed to make public periodic vessels. Sorry. Satan was allowed to make periodic visits to the Apostle Princes on the fully accepted by such Apostle worlds, or until such time as the courts of Uversa should begin the adjudication of the case of Gabriel vs. Lucifer. And that, that would be the Black Pope. Do you remember, I don't know if you saw it a few years ago, lightning struck the Basilica twice? Um, I think this was a couple of years ago. I do remember it. I watched it as it was happening. I often watch anything to do with this because this is, you know, going to tell, give us a hint as to which way the world is heading. And twice the, the basilica was struck, you know, very fast in a row. So is that the devil visiting? So it's, it strikes St. Peter's Basilica uh, hours after the Pope announced resignation. And when uh, Roman Emperor Neo, famously known as the Emperor who fiddled with the Rome, while Rome Byrne committed suicide in 1868 in May, 120 foot high painting of him was destroyed by a bolt of lightning on the same day in the gardens of the Maros, four kilometres away. Interesting, isn't it? Satan could come to your rancher because you had no sun standing in residence, neither planetary prince nor material sun. Yes, I can't say that. He has since been proclaimed vice regent planetary prince of Urantia and the opening of the case of Gabriel vs. Lucifer has signaled the inauguration of temporary planetary regimes on all isolated worlds. It is true that Satan did periodically visit Craig's here, excuse me, and others of the fallen princes right up to the time of the presentation of these revelations. When there occurred the first hearing of Gabriel's pleas for the night, please plea for the annihilation of the Archibalds. Satan is now unqualifiedly detained on the Jerusalem, Jerusalem prison walls. Since Michael's final bestow, no one in all Satnia has desired to go to the prison walls to minister to the interred rebels, and no more beings have been won to the deceiver's cause. For 1900 years, the status has been unchanged. We do not look for removal of the present Satnia restrictions until the ancients of days make a final disposition of the Archibalds. The system circuits will not be reinstated so long as Lucifer lives. Meantime, he is wholly inactive. The rebellion has ended on Jerusalem. It ends on the fallen world. As fast as the divine sun arrives, we, begin, we believe that all these rebels who will ever accept mercy have done so. 
we await the flashing broadcast that will be de deprived these traders of personality existence. We anticipate that the verdict of Uversa and will be announced by extraordinary broadcasts which will affect the annihilation of these interred rebels. Then you will look for their places, for they shall not be found, and they who you who, sorry, and they know you among the worlds will be astonished at you. You have been a terror, but never shall you be any more, and thus shall all of these unworthy traitors become as though they had not been all await the verse decree. So it's been going on for a long time. But for the ages in the seven prison worlds of the spiritual darkness since that near have constituted a solemn warning to all never on equality and effectively proclaiming the great truth that the way of the transgressor is hard, that within every sin is concealed of the seed of its own destruction, that the wages of sin is death. Okay, so, yeah, if you're still with me on this one, thank you very much for watching. It's just a quick story as to placing how the stories of the Bible have been placed together and, and what actually happened in our world and the, the, the galaxy that people call the Milky Way and why we don't leave these worlds anymore because it's quite clear in histories of India you can see rocket ships in the description but this man clearly shows these people have uh, breathing apparatuses on you clearly see the helmets over the head in the tank and he finds a lot of interesting hidden features in a lot of the Indian statues he shows shows a lot of possible of technology and how they are made. So I'll leave a link in the description. It just seems that yeah they had rockets and I mean the Vaders had flying technology back then. I'm pretty sure the Vaders did. So um so they reckon they um the true history of mankind is far more fascinating than what mainstream scholars and history books are ancients are telling us. Did you know that there are ancient texts that date back thousands of years and mention vehicles controlled by mind? Technologies like levitation, anti-gravity, and spaceships coming from other planets. So, into, yeah. So. In fact, there are so many things that have been left out of history books on purpose, as if society is not meant to know about the true history of the origin of man. While many can people consider that ancient Samaria or ancient Egypt was two of the most interesting ancient civilizations on earth, the truth is every single ancient culture is beautiful in their own way and has contributed to civilization in different aspects. If we look at ancient India, we will discover that many are referring to the fascinating ancient things of all time. Ancient India has one of the most extensive histories in the world and their greatest ancient texts called the Vedas are one of the greatest ancient writings on planet earth. Interestingly, these ancient texts, which date back thousands of years, talk about flying ships that visited their continent over 6,000 years ago. Composed with Latin Sanskrit, the texts con constitute the oldest layer of Sanskrit literature and the oldest scriptures of Hinduism. Many consider these ancient tips, texts fascinating and confusing at the same time. The ancient book of the Valkyria, Shasta of the science of the aeronautics, mentions incredible details details of vehicles controlled by the mind, thanks to technology now lost, which was accessed by ancient cultures. But not only do these fascinating writings mention vehicles controlled by the mind, they are very detailed, fascinating technologies like levitation and anti-gravity, futuristic technologies that were present on Earth over 6,000 years ago. Many researchers consider the secret book of the Vietnam Shasta, sorry for saying this wrong, as a guide to spaceships and interstellar travel to understand what is telling us this is telling us they turn to a well known doctor who has written over 120 books and 1200 articles on the thing um, he, he said of course, these fascinating Indian texts speak about humans that lived on other planets and alien beings that visited our ancestors thousands of years ago 
50 years of research in these ancient works convinced me that there are these living beings on other planets and that they were visiting the Earth as far back as 4000 BC. He further explains that this is just a mass of fascinating information about flying machines, even futuristic, fantastic science fiction weapons that can even be found in translations of the Vedas, scriptures and Indian epics and other ancient Sanskrit texts. Many other scholars agree with Dr. Raghunath that the ample amount of evidence written in the Mahabharata and the Rama, where we can find all sorts of technologies. A professor at Aeronautics in the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore said, it's true that the ancient Indian Vedas and other texts refer to aeronautics spaceships, flying machines, ancient astronauts. The study of the Sanskrit texts convinced me that ancient India did know the secret of building flying machines and that these machines were patterned after spaceships coming from other planets. So it's sort of like reverse technology, I think. Seems that no matter where we go and no matter where we look, all ancient cultures mention fascinating details that are misunderstood by mainstream scholars. There are numerous ancient texts that point towards pieces of forgotten history. Ancient Indian history is surely one of those misunderstood pieces of human history. After looking at all the evidence, ask yourself, is it time to change our history book? Well, I think it's time we look back and get the information back. I think we need this information. So this is why I... So this is the, the devil, like we were talking about. So it's used to 